seems like in, in modern society, science has taken on a role that's, that, that puts it above every other discipline and sort of the ultimate arbiter of, of truth that we can look to science to, to give us answers. If you look back over the millennia uh, of the, the story of science, all the way from Galileo up to the modern times, science is, is influenced by the culture it's done in, by the politics of that culture, by the uh, religion of that culture, right? Um, and by the egos and biases of the scientists themselves. The so science is never done in a vacuum. And that's something I think a lot of people um, don't uh, fully appreciate because they think science will have some unbiased answer. Now, I'm not saying, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the science, because it's uh, got a sort of self-correcting method, it can overcome those biases um, in, in due time. But it is, you know, at any given time, sort of influenced by different competing theories. I was really struck in grad school about, uh, you know, some of the, the, the professors there were involved in very acrimonious disputes over whose theory was correct about some scientific piece of knowledge. And you realize, okay, this is not fully a detached um, uh, sort of objective uh, investigation of knowledge that there are egos and biases that, that come into play, um, um, particularly in the present moment. Eventually those tend to get sorted out um, over time, but in the moment, there's a lot of uh, you know things that that influence what science says and how uh, we can uh, learn from it. So a good example of the limits of science and how science needs to interact with other ways of knowing is the pandemic, the COVID nineteen pandemic. And the first thing to recognize there is that you know that we're trying to learn about this. Um, you know, it's like learning to to fly as the plane is going down, right? In the sense that you know, we're learning as the pandemic goes on, we learn about okay, how long do do you have resistance to um, the virus if you've had it before? Um, how long do the vaccines might work? There's all of these things we're learning as we go, so we never have complete knowledge. You know, science is always giving us new knowledge, and we have to use that to to modify our previous knowledge and so forth. So when we say, you know, follow the science, what we're really doing is trying to follow the best science that we currently have, which could be partly true and could be partly incorrect, because as we get new knowledge, we start to realize what we didn't know before. The other thing to recognize there is that science doesn't dictate how we need to respond to things. So science can tell you, okay, this is the virus, this is what it looks like, this is how it's transmitted, this is what people might have. But how we respond to that as society depends on a lot of other factors. There's economic issues that come into play. There's psychological issues that come into play if everybody has to be sheltered in their houses, for example. So the simplest thing we can just say, you know, there's a virus, everybody stay inside their house for 10 years. We know nobody's going to get sick, right? Scientifically, that would work. But we know we can't do that because of all the consequences of that. And all those things have to be weighed by that society as you move forward.